Aloha. It's Wednesday the 21st. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title is 2020 Election Plan, Pity Party, Insults and Attacks. You know, uh, Yogi Berra, New York Yankee, said it perfectly. It's deja vu all over again. And here we are, it's 2016 campaign, not the 2020 campaign. And with Donald Trump, his uh, primary focus seems not to focus on policy and a vision for the future, but his 2016 tactic of insults and attacks. Let's just go through a, a quick list of them because there are many, in the, even in the last week since this show, uh, Donald Trump has really accelerated his, his um, attacks on just about everybody. So let's just don't- Then we may quick. not have time. I, I thought about that and I, I had to truncate this list. So I, I want to make sure that we have time for you and everybody else on this show. So oh, yes. thank you, Jay, for that. Thank you for that observation. That is absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. So let's look at Governor Whitmer of, of, of Michigan. He called her a dictator. He said, um, I guess she she was threatened, right? So he's he's questioning whether or not she was even threatened by those militiamen on kidnapping her and potentially executing her. So that was left up in the air. Uh, number two, Joe Biden. He's, of course, he's, he's calling out for uh, Bill Barr to investigate him prior to the election. And he's calling, you know, uh, Joe Biden and his son criminals, and they need to be uh, investigated and prosecuted ASAP. Uh, he should be in jail, is, is the, um, the, the quote of the day. Um, when you, we're losing, he's losing the votes. He's losing the 65 plus vote. He's losing the women's vote. And there's probably a reason for it. And uh, that reason is how he's being mocked. He's mocking Joe Biden. Um, if you have a visual there on this, this was a tweet from Donald Trump. This was uh, photoshopped so that Joe Biden's head is on a, um, an individual in a wheelchair amongst other seniors in wheelchairs. And it says Biden for resident. Uh, the P is struck out. And um, I can't think of an easier, better way than get the 65 plus vote than mock seniors in the way that he just did with that tweet. Um, let's look at the tax on Dr. Fauci. Dr. Fauci, uh, he's um, been around for over 500 years. He's, um, him and the other of, uh, officials are idiots. And his pitching arm is uh, more accurate than his prognostication abilities. Uh, let's look at um, the pandemic. They're all tired of it. Everyone's tired of it. And uh, they're not buying it, CNN, you dumb bastards. So we just go on and on and where's the pity party? Well, the pity party is Donald Trump is always a victim. And uh, you, that was no sooner clear than in Michigan when he goes, um, suburban housewives, do me a favor, please like me. Uh, I saved your damn neighborhoods. What a pity party that is. Begging and pleading for support from suburban housewives. He's just out of it. So um, you're right, Jay. We don't have time to go down the list, but that's just a quick little rundown. And I'd like to ask you, Jay, first off, I'd like to introduce everybody. Um, welcome everyone. We have Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Welcome to the Trump Week show. I appreciate you all being here. Jay, in the last week, um, what was your moment that struck out most uh, at his campaign rallies? What, what was the, the top hit parade for you? I think he's out of his mind. Uh, <laughs> yes. but, you know, but here, but here's, here's what it is, though. <clears throat> when I say that, I, it occurred to me that he is running the campaign of 2016. He, he, he's doing the same things he did in 2016. It's like a time warp. It's like, you know, he's not responsible for what has happened in the past four years. We're still doing the old thing with Obama and uh, Hillary Clinton. Now, that's really weird. He thinks that people are all in the time warp and he can get them sort of to ignore everything he's done or not done in the past four years. It is the strangest thing imaginable. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think it's going to work. I think the media has made that clear. It's not going to work. It isn't working. But from his point of view, um, this is what he's got. And it's the scariest thing you ever saw. You know, so if we're telling his campaign so staff... If he's is he telling his campaign staff, I know better than you are. You're a paid professional, but I know better, and this is the way we're going to go. He's telling everybody that. 
including some people who now refuse to do it, like, you know, asking Bill Barr to, uh, you know, to uh, make an investigation at the last minute and, and indict all his uh, adversaries. Uh, it's the strangest thing. And I think he's losing traction among, uh, you know, the people who were, uh, you know, his sycophants before. So what, what we have is a, is a bit of a disconnect, but we still have the base. The base is still there. Uh, you mentioned about the housewives. I saw a piece in the paper that said he's actually turning housewives. It's extraordinary. It's such, the lies are incredible. And I hope somewhere in this show, Tim, that we discuss the revelations about his finances, his finances with China uh, and all the trouble that we have now seen revealed about him. Okay, thank you, Jay. Winston, um, any particular attack or insult that uh, came to your mind in the last week, um, and particularly those attacks or insults that are doing the most amount of damage to his campaign and his re e re um, election uh, chances? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's interesting to hear that he, as Washington Post pointed out, that he keeps talking about losing and that he'd leave the country, um, he'd never come back again. I think that there's some realization that this is going to happen and it's a way for him to to leave without you know all of the bluster. Um, it, it's sort of, I think the, the sharks have been smelling blood and it's going all around, but we have to also realize that he still has a solid 42% of the country. And I think Nate Silver 1035 said that uh, he still retains a one in seven chance of winning. And uh, so that's a, that's a, an actual possibility. I think bookies and in Vegas are saying it's, it's not going to happen. And that's might be the, um, the, uh, one of the ways to go, but more concerning is let's say that assuming that the polls all work out, that, that the elections, there's going to be some shenanigans. We've had some Supreme court cases or state court cases that say you can count the votes after this date. You can't count them after that date. We have ballot shenanigans in Texas, uh, the whole nine yards that's to be expected. But at the end of the day, Donald Trump is going to lose and he is uh, we're going to have to deal with it as a nation. And I think there's um, some some important um, points that we need to uh, address, which is that the Republican Party could become more extreme afterwards or um, there's a more hopeful version. And that is uh, a, an article in The New Yorker where it was on the 18th of October. Could could Joe Biden actually bring America back together? And I think that we need to hold that higher vision because we've had enough of this. And so when Donald Trump is gone, we also need to let all of it go and bring ourselves back together. I actually was um, most uh, interested to see Savannah Guthrie, who I didn't realize what power she had in her, but, but that interview that she gave uh, for years, just coming back and back and back, I thought was, was really. Yeah, it, it's uh, something rare that we don't see our journalists doing of late. And that is, Never the follow saw up it. question and the insistence of answering the question. So, Jonathan, uh, uh, who was <laughs> Jonathan uh, Swift? It's Jonathan Swift. He was the he was the only other one that even approached that. But I, I mean, I thought I didn't know Savannah Guthrie gave any more information. I don't watch the Today Show, uh, but I didn't know she talked more about you know is the color of the year red or green. You know, I, I so I was really pleased to see that she did not let up on that and uh, answered asked those questions and just exposed. Um, Donald Trump for the, the lies and that, uh, you know, when he couldn't answer the question about even did he get a test, you know, if you got a test the day of the, uh, of the debate, the, no, these he, things are he, not. She, and so I, I was able to reveal his evasiveness on this. And, and just, yes. And, and so I, I'm feeling hopeful that Americans are seeing this. They're disgusted by it. And we want to move on as a people. And we're like, you know what? We tried that. There's still some important differences that we may have, but we don't need these characters involved we can we can solve these in different ways so i'm looking forward to a post environment where we work on the issues honestly and fairly with sane rational respectful people okay thank you very much winston hey cynthia um given donald trump's 2016 tactics of insults and attacks um are we to believe that he's he's as close as he is in florida and arizona uh, if he loses Florida, you can pretty much say that's the end of the game. Um, not that I believe the polls uh, completely, but he's been keeping a consistent, steady uh, margin. 
and he's slightly ahead in Florida. Uh, despite all his insults of seniors and uh, threats of taking away Social Security by, re by removing the payroll tax, are you surprised at all? Well, I would be surprised if he actually gets the votes. That would surprise me. But the fact that we remain having him in place, that won't surprise me. Because I believe he's going to cheat, like I've been saying all along. Now, I have been doing some more research on the Ivanka trademarks for voting machines lately, okay? And there's a new, well, not brand new, but Forbes on September 20th had an article uh, just this past September 20th. It was written by Tommy Beer. Um, there were 41 trademarks for companies that were for the president or his daughter, right? And, and they're um, Trump uh, incorporated that happened 40% faster than any other time after he was elected. Out of 18 of those trademarks, the Ivanka, of course, branded ones that were for her clothing line and all that stuff, but stuffed in there in the background, voting machines. Yeah, now, no, we, we've talked about that many times in the past, and she did get the trademarks. There's no two ways about it. And no, the question is, how are they being utilized? Are they being utilized? And I, I don't know if we've got a news report story on, on, on that exact topic. And, and to your credit, Cynthia, you have identified it. And you're right. The media has not picked up on it. So kudos to you. And um, um, I, I, I think, though, regardless of the voting machines, I think Donald Trump's imploding. And, and Stephanie, to you, in what, what specific area do you think he's imploding the most? Um, is it through his insults or is his pity party? Uh, or is it some other uh, lack of vision or policy that he's not portraying to the American people? What, what specific thing do you think is taking place that um, people are pulling away from him? Well, he is what he is and he's being it more and more. And, uh, and it will continue um, as we go through the 13 more days and heaven only knows what awaits us in the interim. But um, my, my thoughts have been that if we had had a democratic Senate and House portion, of, you know, one for part of the two years, four years, I would think that then he would have had some um, more press back instead of just from the advisors that he could hire and fire as he wanted. But if the Senate had actually been responsible, then there would have been, um, uh, you know, something that would say stop. And, and he didn't have that. So my concern right now with the election is that we get the Senate, okay? Because that is the key, because there's this other miscreant in this mix, and that is Mitch McConnell. And if we don't get the Senate, we can have Biden as president, we can have the House, and we are still up against it almost as badly. So what is uh, so here again you know the focus gets so stuck by the media and they're all running after the cheese <laughs> when there's the voting machines that cynthia's brought up there's you know really what's going on with crazy giuliani and how come he hasn't been committed yet and then there's the um the mitch mcconnell now i know we have seen a little more about how his race is going and interviews with the wonderful um, person that, that's going against him. I'm so sorry, I can't rip up, right, you know, say her name right off the top of my head, but she's outstanding and it's time for Mitch McConnell to go. I mean, so anyhow, so that's my concern right now. Yes, he's going to unwrap all the way down to God knows what. And then we're going to be having this um, Senate issue. It's, a, it's arisen and we need to watch that uh, that's going to go democratic. Otherwise, um, they're there enabling him. It's back to the Mary Trump book. And her, her question is, why does everybody enable him from the time he is three years old until he's in the presidency? Well, I would say that you just took a page out of uh, Nazi Germany's book, uh, The Power of, of Propaganda, Persuasion, Rhetoric, the, the, the misuse of, of the tool of rhetoric. And he is quite quite effective at it. And he's probably one of the better ones we've seen do this sort of thing. And that's to answer your question. Uh, rhetoric is a very powerful tool and in the wrong hands, it's a hypnotic effect. And I think that answers the question of why no one stands up, why people go along and enable him as they do. And it's um, they're under the cult of personality 
and the tools of persuasion. The so, lie um, and his, yeah. his, his lying uh, makes people think, oh, it's okay, it's going to work out. Like Susan Collins, you know, he's he's been he's been touched by this impeachment. Oh, he'll never get back close to that. Oh boy, yeah. We hey, Jay, that. let me go to you on uh, Stephanie's point, and that is hypothetically, hypothetically, Donald Trump wins the election, but he loses the Senate. So the House and the Senate are retained by the Democrats. Does that save democracy in our country for the next four years? No, no, if, if he's president and, and we have a fully democratic Congress, um, there'll be some more control for sure. But um, as president, he is more powerful now than the president was before, ever before. And he can wreck the world as he has been doing. I also agree with her point that if the Senate remains Republican and Biden is the president, we're in deep kimchi because they won't agree with him. They'll stop him at every, at every door. We'll, ha we'll have a repeat of the Obama administration. Gridlock. Right. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'd like, to, I'd like to go back for a minute to the shiny objects, you know. This, we're in, just as we were in 2016 and before, we're in, a, we're in a time of shiny objects. We're in a time of a reality show, right? And so you get these outrageous uh, self-victimization, you get these insults. It's great theater. It's great television. Here's a man who watches television all day and all night. He cares about getting eyeballs, getting views. It doesn't matter what he says. He just wants people to spell, it, spell his name right. And I think we always have to keep that in mind. He may, not, he may not be affecting the vote that much. He's obviously not affecting the vote that much, but he's holding their eyeballs. In yeah. the meantime, with all the shiny objects, you have these extraordinary things going on and you have to really focus on what he's doing behind his back. I'll give you two examples quickly. One is nuclear proliferation with Russia. So he's the one that pulled that deal when he first got into office. No nuclear you know, proliferation agreement, nothing, gone. Huh? And then, okay, now, two weeks before the election, he's trying to cut a new deal with Russia that we should both you know, stop making nuclear bombs and allow inspection uh, from one side to the other. Well, we have three times the nuclear bombs the Russians do. Um, who's winning? Who wins that deal? See, it's brilliant. You think about it. Everybody thinks now he's going to win the Nobel Peace Prize for cutting a new deal. At the same time, it's probably going to be Putin who wins the deal because Trump is a bad negotiator. So he's giving away the store. We don't notice it. The other thing I think is extraordinary is Nicaragua um, with, the, with the, the, the beef. Okay, this country is being supplied with beef from Nicaragua. Nicaragua is substandard beef. It's not healthy. There's no labeling. If you go into Safeway, they have it, okay? But you can't tell. It's not labeled from Nicaragua, okay? Why is it not labeled from Nicaragua? It's because Trump pulled the labeling regulation. So we can't tell where it's coming from. There's a million things like that that affect our lives that he's doing behind his back while he's putting out shiny objects in front. Okay, thanks, Jay. Um, you know, that, I'm gonna shift a little bit on my agenda here. And Winston, to you, you know, um, there's some things that have been reported of late that aren't shiny objects. They're really jaw dropping news points yet they're getting lost in the mix because we're in this election cycle period. And a couple of them are the 545 children at the border that cannot be reunited with their parents. Um, we have Mark Meadows telling um, the Fed judge that he should not take Donald Trump's tweets seriously. So anything that, Mark, uh, anything that Donald Trump says via tweet is not to be believed. And he had to sign a, a sworn affidavit to that fact. Um, we have the report that Donald Trump has accounts in China, bank accounts. He's paid $200,000 in taxes. Um, these, these, these news interjections into this cycle would normally cause a week's worth of news attention, but now they're barely, uh, you know, a, a, a 10 minute blurb. Any of them that come to your mind as far as, uh, potentially damaging to, uh, Donald Trump in this well, you're right. It's it's the constant barrage, the hourly barrage. But uh, <coughs> I'm heartened to see in the Wall Street Journal um, that uh, over a thousand 
current and former CDC officials criticize the U.S. COVID-19 response. That read Donald Trump in there. Um, uh, also, what was particularly egregious for me was when he had the uh, the rally in, in Michigan where he says, lock them all up as the chants continue to uh, amid a sea of red hats. Uh, uh, the, the digital director for Governor Whitmer uh, criticized this as uh, dangerous. Of course, it's dangerous. I see everything that's said uh, about her and online, um, this, uh, the director tweeted, every single time the president does this at, at a rally, the violent rhetoric towards her immediately escalates on social media. It has to stop, it just has to. Whitmer had the same message saying this needs to stop. Joe Biden says, who the hell would say something like that? I think that part is, it hits it straight on the head. Um, you, you know, you had uh, his former uh, White House chief of staff, his, one of his generals, saying uh, that he is the, uh, telling that friends that um, he's the most flawed person he's ever met. And that was from John Kelly. So you're seeing um, bits and pieces come out here that, that add just a little bit more the kids. I mean, that's, that is so uh, tragic that, that something like that has happened and that we're, we're still, you know, 500, uh, you know, kids that are, there's, they can't find their parents years later from this policy that was one of the very first hallmarks of this administration. So all of it together is adding a little bit more, 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 like you said, that, that's uh, the picture of Joe Biden in the wheelchair, uh, you know, is, is that's your strategy for, for um, gaining seniors. But you also had the federal judge, you mentioned about tweets. Are his tweets law or not? Because half the time the administration says, oh, they're jokes. The other half say, actually, that's a directive. So the federal judge um, in, uh, I believe it was, is Washington, when he said he wanted to declassify all the Russia records. Correct. And that was a tweet. And so the federal judge ordered the Justice Department to say, is this law or not? Because you can't have it both ways. And so while we're, it looks like we're still a, a nation of laws, um, we've got that. But one thing I did want to uh, stress is also about the New York Times coming out with a pretty uh, strongly worded, um, well, the, the USA Today editorial board said they're a diverse ideologically uh, a group of journalists that's uh, separate from the news staff, said they broke from tradition in uh, uh, since the first presidential race in 1982. They broke with tradition four years ago and urged voters not to vote for Donald Trump, saying he was unfit for office because he lacked the temperament, knowledge, steadiness, and honesty that America needs from its president. They did not endorse Hillary Clinton at the time. He said this year, the editorial board unanimously supports the election of Joe Biden, who offers a shaken nation, a harbor of calm and acceptance. So we're seeing, um, I, I thought that the, the if, for those of you that haven't uh, looked at the New York Times and their, uh, their editorial about why we cannot have um, four more years of this is, uh, it's important to read. And I know a lot of people aren't, thrilled with the New York Times. They think it's too partisan, but honestly, uh, they've hit it right on the head and uh, we, 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 America just won't exist as we understand it if we had four more years of Donald Trump. So I encourage people to read a variety of news sources, people reading this show, hopefully, um, if, if they're on Think Tech, they have some open minds. So go out there, educate yourselves, educate your, your friends and family who might be on the fence, the, the elusive five, 10%. But we got a lot of cleanup to do after this election is over. And so we need to keep our eyes on the prize. The shiny objects are, are, are um, yes, they're appalling. But at the end of the day, America is going to elect a sane, calm, rational president. If, if well, we certainly hope so. <laughs> we, we certainly hope so. Hey, uh, Cynthia, um, do you have any reaction to Donald Trump's demands and, and shouts that Bill Barr needs to uh, conduct this investigation immediately and appoint someone so that charges could be brought up against Joe Biden and his son Hunter, Hunter Biden prior to the election. Have we ever seen anything like this in the history of a presidential race? Have we ever seen a banana republic strategy as that which he's played out? Yes, we saw it in 2016. He did the same thing, only it was Hillary instead of Joe Biden, right? It was email. Okay, good point. 
his son doing something untoward, which has already been investigated. How many times? With three times by you know nonpartisan entities, and then there was or two times, and then one time it was investigated by one of his Trump's own people, and still came back with nothing. So the fact that Rudy Giuliani went over there and was hanging out with Darapatch is his name, I think, Darapaska, something like that. The guy who has now been named as a Russian operative is the guy that supposedly, um, you know, uh, he, Rudy got all this stuff from. And then their big thing that they're holding their whole case on is the thing that really gets me the most. They left and it had incriminating evidence on it. Oh, please. For three years, it got left there. Now, I don't care how rich you are. You don't, if you're that rich, you just buy a new laptop. You don't take it to the, to the shop to get it fixed, right? And if you know there's stuff on it that could incriminate you or your father, you're definitely not going to leave it there. So the whole premise that they found this stuff, to me, is laughable. It's absolutely, there's no- Well, if it came out of the New York Post, it is laughable. So uh, that's, that's your news source. <clears throat> the uh, authors wouldn't even put their, assign their names to the story. Uh, well, that says everything to me. Yeah, me too. I, I think it's, <clears throat> a, it's a last ditch effort. We knew it was coming too. We knew that Rudy's been over there trying to hunt something up or create something for months and months, or more than a year he's been over there trying to drum something up. So okay. we knew it was coming. We were promised this October surprise. And I'm sure that Trump expected that to be the October surprise. Yeah. So well, it, it wasn't a surprise. It was more of a joke. Um, yeah. Hey, we're running out of time. And I want to get to Stephanie for one last question. Where, um, unfortunately, you know, this, this 29 minutes goes way too fast. Okay. Stephanie, I don't know if you saw the CNN special called The Insiders, um, where key members of the administration spoke out about Donald Trump. Uh, we had Bolton, um, we had Mattis, Olivia Troy, um, various uh, admirals. And is there anything that they're gonna say that's actually gonna put a hole in Donald Trump's boat, so to speak? Well, um, I don't know if you saw that special or not, but you know, the things that, that were you know, in that special were just unbelievable. And in any other election, it would have been the end of that candidate. Um, but yet here we are today, 2020, where it's not the end of the candidate. Well, everything is so um, through the looking glass with uh, Alice and the Queen of Hearts. I mean, the, everything that <laughs> happens is what Trump's already done. I mean, the whole Hunter thing is the Don thing is the, I mean, the whole thing is like through the looking glass, everything reflected back totally crazy. So um, it's, uh, no, I don't think it's going to make any difference for anybody. Um, they'll chew on it and be grateful for having it and praise um, Giuliani, who I understand is drinking all the time and is never as rarely sober. And so that's been going on for a long time. So there's, there's just a no half holes. of America's drinking and hardly, always hardly sober. Given this then, election it's cycle. hard not to be drinking and be sober in America, but I was going to say, um, yeah, so the, the problem is that um, this thing could go on uh, because people are not shifting, all right? So yes, the, some who were in that independent group and who had, were undecided, but as you say, the base is not, and that's a, a pretty large, uh, scary number as far as I'm concerned. So I don't see um, that moving. I think we're, we're just gonna all go along here and suffer for 13 more days until we get the news and um, be happy to endure whatever comes next if we get a change in the Senate and or Biden as president. All right. So the other thing is, I wanted to mention that they've been talking about Kamala's definition of manslaughter, Jay. It's the- um, You know, I'm that, sorry, it, Stephanie, we, we've run out of time. Yeah. I've, okay. I've got sure. uh, someone in my ear on this point. Uh, you sure. know, we need another 29 minutes, to be honest with you, and I, I wish we had it. Thank you. But uh, I get to thank you for joining us, Jay Fidel, Winston Welts, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Stephanie Dalton. Thank you very much for joining us. Join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock for Trump Week. Aloha, everyone.